Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Mr. Minister, Mrs. Rajavi. It is a great uh, honor to be here. Even for wealthy and powerful and free nations, doing the right thing is not without a cost. And it's not enough to just say it's the right thing. Generations of Russians, generations of South Africans, of Rhodesians, scores of other nations will always remember, even after we forget, who was on the right side. It may be complicated to stand up to the mullahs or Maliki now, but for those who don't, it will be so hard to answer to generations and generations of Iranians and Iraqis if you stood silent. Every European government should be proud if it has taken a stand and decided to be on the right side of history. The attack on Ashraf leaves us in an extraordinary situation. And being here in Italy and in this house, I was thinking how it would be seen in my own family. Once a year, my American grandfather and my Sicilian grandfather would gather in the same house at Christmas. And they argued for 40 years because they never saw the world the same way. Typically, my American grandfather would see a set of facts and always believe that everything would work out Everybody was basically good, and things would be okay. My Sicilian grandfather basically believed nothing would ever work out, nobody was any good, things would always be bad. And they would argue. Looking at the situation at Ashraf, I have finally seen something upon which they could completely agree. We are presented with two sets of realities. Ashraf is a camp in a remote location surrounded by Iraqi military watchtowers. They are equipped with modern technology, hundreds of soldiers watching every movement in the camp, and it is surrounded. We are led to believe that 52 innocent people were attacked and executed without the knowledge of the Iraqi government. We're led to believe that not only did this attack happen through their lines and without their knowledge, but during an evening of chaos, murder, and mayhem in which hundreds, if not thousands, of shots were fired from high-powered military rifles not a single Iraqi soldier noticed the fire, sounded an alarm, and did their duty. That's one set of facts. The other is, is that this attack was done under their noses by the Iranian government, the mullahs themselves under their orders, a government in which your country, the European Union, and mine has now entered into negotiations, reached an accord to suspend temporarily sanctions on the most fundamental and dangerous issue of our time of nuclear proliferation, and will engage in negotiations with a regime that not only murders its own people, but kidnaps innocent people in a refugee camp that is under the protection of the United Nations and the United States? There's an old American expression, do I believe you or my lying eyes? The pictures don't lie. The facts are what they are. Our countries are in negotiations on the one hand, and allied and lending support in the other, with governments that commit murder, 
and kidnapping in the most base violations of human rights. Standing up to them has consequences politically, economically, even in security. The question is really not in the facts. They're clear. The only issue is, what kind of people are we? Do they intimidate us? Are we the kind of people who can simply look the other way? This is just part of history? Or are we, as those who sat before us around this table for a generation in other struggles, determined to be on the right side of history? Last week, Secretary Kerry appeared before our Congress and received a blizzard of attacks from members, Democrats and Republicans of our Congress, that this will not be forgotten, it will not be forgiven, and we will never stop asking. I know members of the European Parliament, I know members of this Parliament feel the same way. We owe it not simply to those who were murdered, but we owe it to ourselves and those who will follow us, that it be remembered the kind of people we were and that we took a stand. And then one thing more, if you would permit me, an issue that faces uh, your country and mine. The dead have departed us, but there are still thousands of living souls who face death every day. The attack on Ashraf, the rocket attacks on Liberty, were not the last. That's a fact. The issue is, what are we going to do about it? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to share these thoughts with you. Thank you.